This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain adult language, violence, and sexual themes, as well as shocking revelations. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayley. The scenario is Full Fathom 5. It was written by Paul Fricker, and it's available from Chaosium and Drive Through RPG. Stefan Amshi is our Keeper of Arcane Lore, and this is Episode 3. Our recap will be given by me as my character, Henry Joy. But before we begin, we have a new patron. Patrick Garrett Pavesi has pledged $3 a month to our club, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you so much, Patrick. So, without any further delays, let's continue our journey into the darkness. The sea can be a harsh mistress to some who come to call, as they make time there forever deep in that watery bed. The storms she creates when angry have sealed many good men to an eternal fate. So it's all the more the tears that fall when she claims a young man not yet in his prime. So be warned, ye that hear the sirens call, the sea can be a harsh mistress. The blood of my ancestors has always been salty. My father and his father before him, stretching back and back, I don't know who was first to trust his life to a ruddy bark. The deep city must be close now. I dreamt it almost as vividly as I saw it with my own eyes beneath the waves some five years ago. My old grandsire used to tell me stories of the black sea that sang and of the mountains that knocked. Magic is in our blood as well. Back in the day they used to call him a demoniste a warlock. There are secrets that lead to deeper knowledge, times gone by, things that I crave with my, with all of my heart. But for now, the only legacy I have is his book. Captain Chapel, Mr. Bond, and Mr. Reed seek the city just as I have done. Pain must be part of it. The saltiness of tears refreshes the sea spirits. Damn Reed for picking the lad. I didn't want Joseph to die, I truly didn't. But the deal was struck with the spirits we summoned to show us the way. Three lives, and they will guide us to the place of our dreams. I don't myself know who took Shepard, but I don't think it was Cole. He seems to be possessed by a water spirit, and I had hoped to talk with it. Not sure if it's testing me or not. The captain says that the sea spirits have chosen him for a sacrifice. But what if he's wrong? What makes him think that he is of higher rank in spiritual matters than I? Who gives him the right? I would rather it take the old and spare the young. The sea is a harsh mistress, they say. There was a divot in the water and it sucked down a rope like a caught whale line, and then that sound like a great sea serpent bellowing beneath us. I prayed to the sea spirits under my breath in fear for my life. We have been weaving back and forth across this expanse whenever I guide the wheel. I'm surprised none of them have caught on. I guess they trust me, though I did notice Silas Coffin looking to see with a confused look on his brow. He's got a keen eye, that one does. So, the captain says Matthew Cole will be the final sacrifice. But I think another less worthy of life would be my choice. And though it may be a mutinous act, it's one that I will be willing to risk. If my blade is swift, and the spirits are true, then we should find sunken Earl Yeh. With the coming dawn, spirits of the sea guide me. 
make my hand as sure as a kraken's tooth. Excellent, Tom. Thank you very much. So, in our last session, Joseph Wright drowned. And Preston, you've taken over George Hussey. So that gives us an opportunity to go rewind the clock just a little bit, a few hours, simultaneously with what was happening up above decks uh, in the last session. Uh, and before any news of Joseph has spread around the ship and before the, the other whale uh, chase boat has returned to the ship. And we're gonna uh, go have a look at what George Hussey, Hussey is doing. Uh, and George, the trip for you has been a very unhappy one. You kind of envisioned this trip as being a great chance to make some money uh, and some camarad have some camaraderie with a lot of the sailors. And as it turns out, sailors are a superstitious and cliquish bunch. And unfortunately, you not being an actual sailor um, and, and sort of being grouped with the Cooper and uh, the blacksmith, um, Cyrus Nickerson and William Worth. And these sailors kind of, they don't consider you one of them. And so you've been sort of left out this entire voyage. And the only piece, people you've really spent a lot of time with are Cyrus Nickerson and William Worth. And William Worth, for his part, is a pretty, uh, pretty decent company, although he's not very talkative. He mostly spends his time reading. Um, Cyrus Nickerson, on the other hand, is obnoxious. And um, he takes to William Worth immediately as the more experienced uh, person and, and seeks, latches onto him in a way and seeks validation from him constantly. And unfortunately, that leaves you, the odd man out, become the butt of all his jokes. Mm -hmm. And so that has been kind of the nature of this voyage for you. Um, it's not quite the, the, the experience that you'd hoped for. Um, and it seems rather odd because uh, your character is actually from Hawaii, right? Yes, sir. So you've been, like, you have a good knowledge of the sea. You've been around the ocean your whole life, and you sort of expected to be a shoe-in with this crew. And somehow that just hasn't happened. I've always been an amateur. Uh, this is my first professional excursion as on a sailing vessel you know, for this length of time. It's been difficult socially. You know, you try to say, oh, the hoisting of the mainsail or whatever, and they look at you with just contempt and disdain. And I retreat yeah. the decks and see my duties. And so it is during the afternoon while you're downstairs below decks um and there's you guys cyrus nickerson takes a lunch break and about an hour later he comes back down and rejoins you or you hear him coming down the stairs and uh you hear his voice behind you and he says hey george you hey, know your son. way around fish eh being from hawaii and all i've got her to fish in my time here and there hey the boys and i caught a new fish today george one we ain't seen before we was hoping you might have a suggestion about what to name it. I think and I see where this is going, but I'll play along. Cyrus, Cyrus holds up this horrifying, like near gelatinous black monstrosity of a fish with spines and teeth and these bulging upward facing eyes. And he says, we was thinking it about naming that after you, George, a hussy fish. <laughs> what do you think, George? It's, Does it resemble someone in your family? Your sister, uh, maybe? So funny, so funny. And he Cyrus. takes the mouth and he kind of does this fishy thing, you know, like. <laughs> uh -huh. Huh. Yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah. that's, that's a good one. I've, Look at yeah. the way she's looking at you, George. It's either mm -hmm. dinner time or it's love at first sight. Ah. Uh, you know, it's it's hard when you're a gentleman as good looking as myself. They're all just smitten with you. I'll walk Hi. up and start putting my hand on the head of the thing and say, "Ah, yes, it it, it is charming, isn't it?" A certain, you know, there's something. Hmm. 
You know, it, Aye, it's... that's it, George. We might just have ourselves a wedding aboard ship. <laughs> Won't we, William? And, you know, uh, he, William is in the, William Worth is in the corner and he's like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you think, George? Care to kiss the bride? And he holds it up to you. I'll sort of pucker my lips a little bit and then, oh, no, and it stinks and it's fishy and gross and awful. Oh, come on, Cyrus. It's just, uh, maybe not now. Oh, maybe well... later. We gotta get to know suit, each other first. Suit yourself, he says, and he walks off laughing to himself. With the fish? Yeah, with the fish. Um Yeah. Are you are you wanting to investigate the fish? I'm sort of curious about the fish. What the hell was that, William? You ever see anything like that? He just shakes his head. I like to read too. It's I just ran out of books after the first week. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Have I ever seen a fish like this before? I don't know. You have never seen anything so monstrous in your life. Wild. I figure we're in the deep ocean. You know, I, I don't know what kind of deep sea nonsense people are pulling out. About how big was the thing? Like a small child? <clears throat> yeah, that's probably about right. Like a baby size, but, you know, with a lot more teeth. Totally. Huh. Very strange. I'll I'll follow him. Uh, where is he going? I mean, are we actually going to have it for dinner? Oh yeah, he just you know like slams it down in a corner someplace and and leaves it there. You know, just abandons the fish. Yeah, it's kind of like it's in it's in the it's down in the area where you guys process a lot of whale blubber and stuff like that. So he just kind of throws it in the corner and you know. Totally. Well, yeah. I'm always looking for a new subject for a, for. A, a whittling or a carving of some sort. I figure I'll okay. go and take a look at it and try to get, you know, enough of a mental image so I could carve it out of wood later if I needed, to, not needed to, but was out of subjects for carving. Okay. Maybe it'll make a yeah. grotesque. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's gonna make a it's gonna make a very grotesque something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. You have a pretty good image in your mind of what it looks like, even even though you may regret that later. Mm, totally, totally. Uh, and, I mean, is it appropriate to just leave the fish lying here in the blubber hall? Uh, can it be? I mean, someone's someone's going to have to have to deal with it eventually, but it's not hurting anyone there for now. Sure, sure. Hmm. Maybe I should kiss the fish. I don't know. I guess I'll go back to my bunk and <laughs> start in on whatever it was I was doing before. Uh, Am I how how heavily tasked am I with shipboard duties? You always have work to do, um, and you just kind of whittle away at it. Um, but you know, generally speaking, especially with a whole uh, boat out today, it's been a it's been a kind of a light day. Not a lot of people, you know, snooping over your shoulder. Mm. Great, great. Uh, and I'm wondering whether I have some other agenda. I it seems like William isn't super interested in talking to me. Um, Cyrus has gone off wherever he's gone, uh, presumably on some further excursion to make me the butt of the joke once again. Um, yeah. Who else is aboard at this point? Uh, well, the captain is presumably in his cabin. Uh, Lawson Bond is aboard taking, you know, just mm -hmm. usually doing what he does, like stocking things and taking inventory and doing whatever. Um, uh, the cook, Barzillai Jones, is working on food. And then there's some sailors up on deck. You're not exactly sure who. But if, totally. as, as a character, you might not be. But as a player, of course, you know who exactly who they are. Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I figure I should continue with my duties. Is there, I mean, is there any particular reason to be suspicious or things besides the once again being made the butt of a joke by some hideous thing they caught in a net somewhere? Um, nope. Uh, that, that, that moment seems to have passed. So, uh, yeah, if you want to go back to your normal things, we'll, we'll move on to um, Henry Joy. Very curious, yes. I'll be whittling away. So Mr. Reed and I are going down to sacrifice poor Matthew to the sea. Not temple. just yet. I want to return to the scene 
in the captain's cabin, okay. which was at the very end of the last session. And after saying what the cabin, what the captain said, he opens the book. And once again, you guys together cast the spell contained within the book. And this takes some time, but when it's done, the captain nods and says, I, she's heard us. She'll come tonight and she'll be wanting her due. Henry, Obed, you're on watch tonight. We'll finish it tonight. And as the other two men are leaving, the captain, Henry, you're, you're sort of the last one of the three to leave. And the captain catches your, your arm and kind of pulls you back in with him. Captain? He closes the door behind you. And it's the two of you alone together in the captain's cabin. And all of a sudden, his normally stern exterior kind of breaks. And for the first time, you feel like you're seeing a very real side of the captain. And he looks very upset. And he says, Henry... It wasn't supposed to be like this, Henry. Not this way. Not Joseph. Not that sweet boy. Captain, you know what, how I felt about the whole thing. I think that the elderly should be sacrificed, not the children. Yes, Henry. I want to confess something to you right now. Have you been down to see Matthew? No, Henry, I haven't. I think... I think that poor man is slowly being possessed by one of the sea spirits. His skin has changed color. His fingers are webbed. His nails are growing. I don't think he's supposed to be the sacrifice. I, I... was intending when I got down there to slip my knife between the ribs of, of Obed Reed, who sent that boy to his death. I... What's happened to us, Henry? I fear we've doomed ourselves to hell. Well, I'm not so sure there is a hell, but I know that Reed sent that boy to his death, and he shouldn't have. Should have chosen somebody older. You're right, Henry. It cannot be Matthew Cole. Matthew Cole belongs to the sea. And the sea don't give back. No. It has to be someone else. I say Reed. He, he walks it. He walks over to the cabinet, on, which is hanging above his desk, and he takes a small key out of the top drawer of the desk, unlocks the cabinet and opens it. And he takes out a pistol. And he says, Henry... I can't do it myself, Henry. I don't have it left in me. Not after poor Joseph and good Mr. Shepherd. I can't pick another one. I can't choose another man to die. He checks the pistol for ammunition and and, and seems to like confirm it to himself. And he, and he turns to you and he says, if it comes to it, you'll do what's necessary, won't you, Henry? I and will. he holds the pistol out to you. I will, sir. Good. Good man. The Take only it question, now. The only question I still have is who killed Shepard? It wasn't I. There's no explaining it, Henry. The sea claimed him. Well, it did so directly. We'll see. We should have the final sacrifice this evening and then tomorrow at the sun rise we might be able to see the island aye henry just one more night as you say the time is right the city will rise go now henry keep quiet and keep the men calm it won't be much longer now Hi, sir. Okay. Let's switch to John DeWitt and Silas Coffin.
you guys are in the forecastle mm -hmm. with the rest of the sailors. Oh, excuse me. Um, when the other boat, when the other chase boat returns with a bunch of sailors, the news of Joseph's right drowning hits the ship. And while the loss of Herman Shepard was shocking and deeply upsetting, Joseph Wright's drowning is absolutely devastating. People, people are, are, are in shocked disbelief. You know, they, they, they have to go and look at his empty berth just to prove to themselves that he's gone. And that very quickly starts turning to anger. And you can hear the whispers and the men talking. And at the end of the day, when they return to their berths, there's a bunch of conversations going on in the crew berthing. And you and John DeWitt and Silas Coffin, the two of you are present for it. Uh, and when you when actually when you come back in, John DeWitt, Silas, you're already there. Charles Shorter is complaining out loud. He's the other greenhorn in the crew. Charles Shorter is saying, I don't care about the money anymore. I don't care about being a whaler. I just want to go home. We shouldn't ought to have killed all them whales. We've angered the sea now, and she's claiming her price. None of us will live to see home. We'll all die out here, down in them black depths, our eyes and tongues eaten out by crabs and eels. Our fates are side with the sea now. I just, I and don't... Mel I, I, yeah, go ahead. I, I, can't, I can't believe that Joseph could have drowned. He, he told me he's been on boats all his life. It's all he's ever known. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. Yeah, there's a chorus of eyes, you know, the sailors. Are like, yeah, he was a good swimmer, strong I, swimmer. I, I knew some, him to be. I there be something foul in these here waters in which we've been assailing. Do you think, Mr. Witt, do you, Mr. DeWitt, do you think it's true that this is God's wrath, our punishment? I, if it... If it be the wrath of God, I wish it would be only against those who have blasphemed against his name, lost in bond, who threw all our fixings of God out into the waters. I and he still walks about this ship unpunished, full in his pride. There is something not right about this voyage. There is something not right about those that lead us not right. You're right. It's not right. Melvin Weeks is like, aye, and I'll get no justice from my prayer book. And a bunch of other sailors are, you know, aye, 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 you know. Nor Valentine for his crucifix, nor any of the rest of us. It's just hell in a handbasket and no Bibles for comfort on the way down, thanks to Mr. Bond. And a bunch more eyes from the sailors, right? Mr. Bond was ready to whip Mr. Arangi for that, and nothing comes of him when we've, he's found out to have been the perpetrator. It's just not right. Aye, and Melvin Week continues. He says, aye, and we'll never even know why he did it. And then Richard Peterson, who is kind of a, a, a soft-spoken guy, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't say a lot, and speaks up in kind of a rare moment. And he says, we know why he did it. Why? I, why? And would be that reason, lad. He told us himself. When Mr. DeWitt confronted him, Mr. Bond said we'd bring a curse upon the ship. That's why he did it. So one thing I know from all my years at sea, the God of the sea is no Christian God. The God we know his domain ends at the shore. You have to understand the man, you see. In Mr. Bond's world, there's only two things. There's God and heaven and the Bible on the one side. And on the other, there's the devil and hell and sin. And there ain't nothing in between. So if you ain't with the one side, 
then you must be with the other. And you don't go walking into the devil's house carrying a Bible and waving a crucifix unless you want to offend the devil himself. That's I why Lawson Bond did what he did. He thought he was saving us. And that's why the captain don't punish him as well. I, he might have such confused notions in his that brain of his, but I say it better to confront the devil with Bible and crucifix in hand than to be here all exposed on the open waters of the devil himself. I don't care what, what his reasons be if it justifies his own actions in the deck in the in the black gulfs of his mind, but that does not mean what he did was right or just or justifiable. Bunch of the men nod and agree. Yeah. And then there's a there's a, there's a silence for a while. And Charles Shorter says, If I live to see land, I shall never set foot in the sea again. Not even to dip a toe or test it with a finger. Not ever. Me too, Mr. Shorter. Me too. So, after that conversation, Henry Joy and Silas Coffin, you guys are on first watch from, from about sundown to midnight. And the second watch from about midnight on uh, is going to be Obed Reed and Isaac Chase together. So the two of you guys are up on deck just after sunset. And the other men are all basically having their conversations and quietly going to sleep down, down below decks. How are you doing, Silas, this evening? It's just terrible. It's just terrible. Joseph was one of the few people that showed me kindness, and I considered him a friend. I just can't believe he was he's dead. I feel great shame that I couldn't save him. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Mr. Joy. It wasn't your fault. No, it was that damn Reed's fault. Putting the boy out there to clean that damn uh, thing. <laughs> I can't remember the word. I just, he was such a good swimmer. You and I had seen it, both. I Something grabbed him. Sense. Something grabbed him and pulled him down. I could see what? his poor face looking up into mine. I Something reached tried for to his grab arm. Mr. Chase the other day. That was the same day. It must have been the same thing. They said a hand out of the sea, some sort of sea spirit. Do such things exist, Mr. Joy? So they say. Mermaids and mermen and the sea is vast, vaster than the land. Who knows what's down there? Some say there's a great city built down on the bottom of the sea. It can rise when the when when the stars are right in the sky, and one can navigate to it, and it holds great wonders. And the sea people live there when it's beneath the waves, and men's fortunes can be found when it's above. I've never heard such a thing, Mister Joy. Old tales of the sea. You know, my grandsire was known for such things. Uh, he talked a lot about the sounds that rang out beneath the sea and the, the mountains that clanged and clashed in the woods. That there were more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophy. Except he said it in French. <laughs> Sounds terrifying, dreadful. It is. It's terrifying, and dreadful, the unknown. But I also, it's exciting. Like oh, I don't know about that, Mr. Joy. I think I would just like to go home. Soon. I could see you didn't much care for the whaling. Just felt so brutal. These they seem great, like such gentle creatures. Great huge sea cows is what we treat them as. Nobody ever cries for the dead cow. But we eat. But I we don't you're eat. Right. We don't eat the whale, we steal from him. As you guys are having your conversation, you notice the captain come up, come out of his cabin, and he 
comes up to the top deck and he just sort of quietly walks over to one side. Ahoy, Captain. Ahoy. Is there anything I can get for you this evening? No, thank you, Henry. That's all right. Would you you like just go fish, on about sir? your business. Would you like a fish, sir? That's all right, Silas. Not just now. You you go on about your business. Never mind what, never mind what I'm doing. I can't. Si Silas be a good one to have on watch. He's got a keen eye. Keen eye coffin, they'll call him. Oh, thank you, Mr. Joy. Keep an eye on that horizon, Silas. Aye, sir. Aye. There's a good lad. And he kind of climbs over the side railing and starts lowering himself down closer to the water. Captain? Go on about your business, Henry. A ship needs his captain, sir. Aye, Henry. When, how close are you guys going to stay to the captain? I think I need to get close. I'll stay on the railing up above. I think I'm, I'm kind of caught between what he told me to do and, and yeah. you I think need maybe, to keep. yeah. Yeah, I'll keep watch like the captain ordered. And are you gonna are you gonna be visible while you're while you're watching him, or, or what? Are you, what are you doing? Sure, I'll I'll, I'll be visible. I'm 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 basically I'm patrolling the side of the ship that he's on, so I can keep an eye on him, and Silas can do the other side of the ship. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so Henry, as you're watching the captain lowering himself down closer to the surface of the water, you see that there is something kind of floating there on the side of the ship, which is not surprising since oftentimes there are whale carcasses floating there overnight and things like this. Sure. And this does indeed look very large and kind of smooth and round like a whale carcass. But the captain gets down very close to it and you can hear his voice almost at a whisper. And he seems to be talking to it very, very quietly. I think I shall recite some of the prayers my grandsire taught me. Uh, the, the sea people preserve us and keep us safe. Would you like to make a listen roll? Sure. One team. Oh, no, that's a seven. Seventy-two. Uh, that is not a good roll. I think I think that is a constitution check. If I if I'm reading this correctly, you might want to try that one again. I got eight that time. That is uh, that is a extreme. So you kind of shuffle your way a little closer, just within earshot. And you can hear the captain as he says, two down, one to go, and then our deal will be complete. Will you not let him see me just one more time, me father? And he reaches out, almost touching the water, like he's seeing something in the water. And he says, Papa, Papa, I'm coming for you. And just as he touches the water, something seems to like awaken him out of his this little spell. And he backs away from the water. And then there's this sound. of something large moving under the ship. Teeth. What was and that? Whatever it was, whatever it was that's floating next to the boat sinks into the water and seems to be gone. Captain, I'd suggest you come back aboard. It weren't nothing, Silas. Don't you worry about it. Aye, sir. Aye. Okay. Then the captain goes back into his cabin. 
Now, it's my intention that when our watch is through, I'm not going to go directly back to my uh, cabin, my, uh, my spot. I'm going okay. to lurk about on deck looking for an opportunity to take care of Mr. Reed. Okay. Uh, do you want to offer any other details about how oh. what your plan is? I, my, uh, my, my solid detail is to skulk up behind him when he's not looking and slip a fish knife between his ribs and up into his chest. I don't want to use the gun unless I have to. And if I can, I'll push him overboard at the same time that I do it. Okay. Okay. About midnight, when you guys retire, Silas, you go below deck and you wake Obed Reed, mm -hmm. who in turn wakes Isaac Chase. And the two of you guys head up together to the top deck. It's a very still and quiet night. Yeah, sleep hasn't been coming well. Uh, very exhausted. Uh, dragging my feet a little bit. I stay quiet for the beginning of the watch. After some silence, I'd start a conversation. But we go up and get into position. Okay. Yeah. So Obed Reed, yeah, if you, uh, Obed Reed just kind of quietly smokes cigarettes and does what he does. Is there anything that you wanted to ask him or? Yeah, after the first good smoke, looking out at the still water under the moonlight. Say, Mr. Reed, you've known me some time now, wouldn't you say? Hi, Isaac. I I've been on the waters, I've seen men die, I've seen men go mad. I I've been trying to second have. guess myself. I'm not mad. There was a thing in the water with an arm. I know you had to yell at me in front of the, the lads, everyone else watching. But there was a thing with an arm covered in scales. Isaac. You can't go There's telling something. stories like that to the men. You know how sailors are. There's something They're a superstitious in these bunch. Waters. Something's wrong out here. You must have seen something wrong, Isaac. The light plays tricks on your eyes out here. I, I've been I out wish to see I a could long convince time. myself. It's, it, it'd be easier to say I was wrong. But I can't. I know it. It was there. Well, what do you want to do about it, Isaac? I... There's... Just something malicious. I've been thinking, the boy. That's... It was right afterwards. The same thing might have grabbed him. There might be something that's trying to kill us on this boat. Or underneath us. There's nothing, Isaac. Put it to rest. Aye, sir. Okay. Where are you going to be hiding exactly, Henry Joy? I don't know. There's got to be... Uh, oh, yeah. There's I stuff all really over. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, I'm I'm going to I'm probably going to have to reposition a couple times to get at the right spot, or where I if I know Reed's habits from our long voyage together, where he's most likely to stand and look out at sea. Uh, yeah, ho hopefully not up at the um, the the bow because at the bow he might be somewhat higher up and everybody on the boat could see him if. They were looking somewhere in the middle. Okay. Why don't you make me a stealth roll and we'll go from there. Come on, I want to kill this fucker so much. Yeah, he's not a nice guy. 
Well, let's go with the dice. I got a 98. Okay. Isaac, when as you're talking to Obed Reed, you notice Henry Joy in the shadows, kind of scooch from one hiding place to another on the deck. Right. So it's um I am I able to to stifle the the surprise of seeing a man I'm, if if I you choose yeah i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you choose how to react yeah i'll uh perhaps falter with my words but play it off like a cough and then <laughs> if i could get over to have a word with henry before mr reed notices i certainly will okay yeah i think that's that would be possible given given enough time and Obed Reed is not particularly, you know, he just walks around the deck. And so, yeah, there will come a time when he's on one end of the ship and you guys are on the other. So, yes, if you want to approach Henry Joy, you could do that. Yeah, I see him peeking out from a barrel and I point directly at him while I'm walking towards him. So he knows he's got. What should be looking at Isaac Chase? I you should be in bed, sir. What is? What are you doing aboard? I just fancy the smoke I did. You just mind your own business. Smoking and chatting over there? I... You got a look in your eye. I'm on watch right now. It's my duty. Isaac Chase, there be some terrible things that have happened on this ship in the uh, last day. Someone deserves. I, I know what's been going on, and we deserve uh, restit restitution. Restit rest for, for prosecuting you know, what that word, you know. Uh, I'd be meaning to have a confrontation with uh, Obed Reed. Reed. My suspicion was with M Mr. Bond. Uh, Mr. Bond is a superstitious fellow, but he's not the root of all evil. That Mr. Reed sent that poor boy to do his death, and he knew exactly what he was doing. And he would have sent you to your death had you not been keen-eyed. If, had I not had Silas Coffin with me, I, I see. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll turn my eye the other way. I just, you're, you're sneaking around. Are, are you? What is your intention here? I, I'll, I'll look him in the eye with, uh, determination in my eye, and I'll show him the fish knife. Now you keep your eye. You keep your mouth shut. How certain are you? Now that you know, I think my chances have doubled. Reed's crossed me. I've never been too fond of the man, but I need to know you have something. Well, I will tell you one thing: the captain is aware. And he doesn't disapprove. Actually, I'm not sure that I would say that because it impl Im implicates the captain, and I'm not sure that I would implicate the captain. Well, this is the justice of the sea. I'll, I'll keep him distracted. Well, with the comrades, then. <laughs> You'd best be right. I'll uh, reposition myself a bit. Okay. I'm hoping that Isaac will follow through and push Reed over in my direction. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm thinking I'll I'll be working one of my cigarettes, walking up um, to Reed, and I'll drop it on the deck and say, "By God, what's that out there in the water?" 
<laughs> Try to get him looking one way. Okay. Well, I think this is a fast talk opportunity. Let's try that. <laughs> Great. Um, I rolled a 26. Pretty good. I don't know my stats, though. <laughs> I will check it for you. Pulling it up. Isaac, your fast talk is 45. That's a success. Yeah, he doesn't suspect a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Falls yeah, so right for it. One person shouting in the middle of the night won't wake up the whole boat. I'm not being very loud, but insistent. It's there. Yeah. You're telling yeah. me you can't see that. <laughs> Where, Isaac? I don't see anything. Where? Show me. Point it out to me. It's right there. It's, it, it, it's coming around. It's... <laughs> yeah, just really jerking him around I, on so this. I as soon... I just don't see it, Isaac. <laughs> if if Reed leans out over the railing to see, yeah, he's I doing will. exactly that. That's yeah, what I'll yeah. put my hand on his back and jam the knife right right in, into his. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a bonus die on this one, Henry Joy, because you got him by you've got him surprised. So go ahead and roll. Well, let's see. What am I going for? Uh, this fight, fighting brawl? Uh, or... You should have a knife. Okay, but it is. Okay. A fighting brawl. Then I succeeded on the second roll. And uh, the knife, the fish knife, though, is, you know, the thin little... Fish you knife. walk up behind him... You walk up behind him and just like a professional. You slip the knife right through the ribs. He lets out a kind of a... And, and we're going to push him. I, I did seven damaged. Okay. I, I, I assume D8 because it'll... That's, that's a nine-inch. Yeah. Line. Yeah. No, you, you got him. And he goes over the rail and... Into the drink. And I'm off to bed. <laughs> oh, you'd best be right about this, Henry Joy. You just murdered the first mate of our ship. Was he the first mate? Oh, he was the first, no, he I... the first mate. No. Oh. Was he, the first mate? he was. All right, yeah. There's... Fuck the first mate. <laughs> There's a fear in me, Har Henry. I know you're close with the captain. Uh, it's proper. We tell him. Call for isn't it? overboard. All for man overboard. Man, man and I, overboard. I slip away. Man overboard. Man overboard. Let's change to Matthew Cole. I think my intention then is to go down to Matthew Cole. So that's where I'm headed now. To let okay. him go. So, okay. so what I've been doing for the last little while is I've taken my long fingernails and I've been carving an outline of the temple in the wall of the uh, the ship and then I'm getting like mm -hmm. ash and, sh and fish guts whenever I can find around the storage room and I'm applying it like paint I'm just trying to mm -hmm. create what I can see in my dreams along the wall there so it's what I'm working on very carefully right now okay all right so yeah you're you are alone down in the in this storage room the makeshift rig and you're down there for many hours Mm -hmm. uh, just you and this little candle lantern, and and that's it. Um, but even by candlelight, um, you the physical changes that you have been undergoing are now undeniable. Mm -hmm. As much as you've as much as you wanted to kind of put them out of your head, there's, yeah, there's no more denying it. Yeah. Your hair is beginning to fall out in these clumps. Your skin, you can see it, is white almost like bluish white. The webbing between your fingers feels more pronounced than it was before. And you can see something starting to form on your wrist that you think might be scales. Well, I'm going to take the detritus that's been falling off. I'm just going to put it into a little pile that I'm going to destroy later. OK. OK. Yeah, and as you're sitting there and drawing things on the walls, you once again begin hearing the whispers
And then there's a knock at the door a moment later. Okay, I'll, I'll turn around slowly and I'll stare into the darkness and see who's knocking. It's Orangi. And he's standing there staring at you wide-eyed. And he says, Mr. Cole? Yes, sir. Are Arangi. you alive? I'm alive, Orangi. How are you? His jaw seems kind of slack as he's taking in your appearance. And he says, Oh, Rangi, of all of us, you're the one who would be most ready to see anything strange, aren't you? He says, What do you mean, Mr. Cole? Doesn't Father Tulu tell you of such strange things? Uh, I get Father close. I get, cl I get closer to him, like I get close to the door. As I'm looking at him. Father Tutu looking at the is... figure of what I used to look like, because he looks like a normal person. So. <laughs> Yeah, he 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 looks a little bit afraid of you, actually. Oh, I back up slightly. Yeah, he he actually um yeah, but he after a second or two, he kind of steps forward again, and out of his pocket, he said, "I brought something for you, Mister Cole." Oh, thank you, Ringy. You've always been a kind one. What do you have? He he pulls out a scrimshaw pipe and oh. a little packet of tobacco. Oh, Mr. Orengi, your generosity is beyond that of the saints. You know how much I love the weed. Such a kind You're gesture welcome. will not go. Such a kind You're gesture welcome. will not go unrecognized. And I'll take the pipe from him. Okay. Yeah, and, and a pack of tobacco as well. Do you have any dreams, Mr. Orengi? What kind of dreams? Strong ones. Vivid ones. He shakes his head. No. No. Nevertheless, you're a good soul, Mr. Rangi. People will look out for you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. I wish you good luck, Mr. Cole. And he he turns around and leaves. Are you going to continue continue your your work on the on oh, the yes, drawings? Oh yeah, I my work, but now I've got something to help me relax. <laughs> oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, as you are getting back to work, you light up a pipe and you start to relax. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Somebody playfully puts their hands in front of your eyes from behind, and there's a whisper in your ear, Guess who? Is it you, my dear? No, I cannot guess who. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna touch the hands. Do they, what do, what do they feel like, young, old? When you hold your hand up to your forehead, you feel a sudden splash of cold water, and then, the light goes out. Oh, how can I finish my work? I'm looking around the gloom. Can I see any shapes? You can see nothing. It is pitch black. Okay, I'll, I'll sort of puff the uh, pipe a bit to create like a little bit of a glow. Okay. Can yeah. I see any? Can I see any shapes? You can see. You know, your room looks empty. Just you. Who's with me? Put my palm out. Outside the door, you hear the sound of the, the lock being messed with. Okay. I'll step to the side a bit, just kind of like watch. As the door opens, framed in the doorway, dripping with water, is a pale and deathly looking young girl, maybe seven years old who looks just like you remember Emma at that age, if she had drowned. She Emma, turns I... around. She turns to the side and steps away from the doorway. Oh. Well, it's and Emma. There's, a, I... there's a voice yeah. that you hear coming from all directions and nowhere at once. 
Come to me, Matthew Cole. Come to me. Lead the way, Emma. I will follow you. Okay. Okay. I go where she goes. She leads me out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come back to you, Matt, uh, Matthew Cole. Henry Joy, you said you're going to bed? No, I was going to go see Matthew Cole. Okay. But I might be there. Might be there a few minutes late. <laughs> okay, Isaac. When a few minutes after Obed Reed's body hits the water, you start noticing some shadows in the water, swimming around the ship. Well, uh, I think at this point I'm going to act as though I didn't see Henry Joy and say that the first mate just fell overboard. So I'm probably going to be sounding an alarm and waking people. Okay. Yeah. So you're like, you ring a bell three times or whatever it is that sounds Uh the alarm and you hear people start getting up and yeah, people are running up to the deck. And yeah, yeah, some lanterns start being lit. And sure enough, yeah, this ship is surrounded by innumerable shapes swimming around, seeming to like attracted to the hull of the ship. Swimming just under the surface, you can see these large things. And occasionally you can see things that look like arms. Yeah, yeah, it's no good. Um, Well, uh... I'll be looking for the captain. During the alarm, I'll probably turn around and head back up. Pretending it's okay. Okay. Yeah, pretty much everybody is now coming up on deck. And is there anything you want to do about these shadowy shapes? Well, um... I'm thinking uh, lots of superstition. Maybe we angered some god. Maybe Obed Reed was in on it. Maybe I made a big mistake. Um, Isaac is not in a calm place at all. A lot of adrenaline and panic. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to get to the the captain and report what happened and see what he tells me, basically. What are you going to say to the captain? Um, Yeah, I'm going to say, uh, Captain, during the watch... First mate overboard. He was underneath the waves by the time I looked. He he does a double take. He says, "What, Mr. Reed? He's he's gone." And, Mr. Reed is gone. And there's things, monsters in the water. They took him. They must have. He nods. And, Isaac, can you make a psychology check for me? Sure. Um, that is 75. I'm pretty sure that's a fail. Okay. Yeah. So, as you guys are looking at these shadowy shapes that are surrounding, but not really breaking the surface of the water, something does break the surface of the water about 100 yards out. And it looks a lot like a body. Is, and then a moment later, Mr. Reed? another one pops up. And this time, you could see it slowly raise its arm out of the water. Is and more safe? and more bodies begin floating to the surface and bobbing on the surface of the water around the ship. Is it safe to assume that most of us are up here on the deck at this point? Everybody, except Matthew Cole, who is on his way up, is up on the deck. Okay. The dead of the sea are rising. Mr. I DeWitt. be a judgment day already. 
Mr. DeWitt, you've been promoted to first mate. Our sec, our sec, our first mate fell overboard. When did this happen? Nigh an hour ago. I. What be the meaning Look, of all this? There, there. Nathaniel West all of a sudden lets up this cry and points out at the water. And he says, I think that was Joseph Wright. And I need you guys to start making some sand checks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 92. Oh, one. Uh, 31. Oh, nine. Which is... 63 That's... is a failure. Pass. Okay. If you failed... Oh, yeah, you lose six sanity. If you succeeded, you lose one. And we're not going to worry about Bouts of Madness right this second, since we're very close to the end here. And Matthew Cole. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. Before we get to Matthew Cole. Are you guys going to be doing anything on board the ship? I'm going to run for the book. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Um, you do know that the cabin is locked. I'll kick it in. <laughs> okay. Uh, Henry, you run down to the captain's cabin, and I need you to make a strength check to see if you can kick in that door. How about the rest of you guys? All right, you I don't know. let them aboard. I want to start arming people with... Um, harpoons or something. Harpoons, yeah. the, the long nice. lensing knives. Fight, fight them off, yeah. I, I like that. Isaac's in a really bad place, but if, if yeah. John DeWitt shoves a knife into my hand, <laughs> I'm going for it. Okay. Yeah, there's, 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 there's harpoons and knives. Each of you has at least a knife if you would rather have a harpoon. And yeah, Tom, what did you say? I got 15 out of 50. I'll spend five to make it extreme if I need to. That's not necessary. Um, yeah, you succeed. You succeed. Okay. I'll run you kick the my... door in. You grab, you, yeah, you immediately see it on the shelf. You grab the book. And I start looking through it to see if I can find counterspell of some sort. Let the dead sleep. Okay. You start paging through it. Yeah. Yeah, there might be a chance of that. So we'll come back to you in a second. Um, and the rest of you guys, you begin handing out harpoons and knives and things. And as the dead begin swimming closer and closer to the ship, and some of them actually climb up, try to attempt to climb up onto the ship, you guys stave them off with these harpoons. And it feels for a moment like you guys are are winning and then all of a sudden there is a loud noise and the entire ship rocks and i need you all to make a dex check please around the ship these dark spires begin emerging from the water in various points. One of them emerged just below the ship. You can tell from the sound, the loud sound, there's wood splintering in the background of the sound. And you have this sinking feeling that you know that the ship just got stoved. I failed my dex check. Okay. John DeWitt, you go sprawling onto the deck. A bunch of the men start shouting, she's taken on water. She stole below the water line. Aye, quick. 
Quick, lads, get that carpenter. We need to patch her. I'll head below deck and see whether I can't at least try to control the damage. There's so much water flowing in that you immediately know that there is no patching this hole. Abandon ship! Abandon ship to the lifeboats! Let's go to Matthew Cole. Matthew Cole. Mm -hmm. As you follow this drowned young girl up the steps mm -hmm. and onto the deck, mm -hmm. and you finally emerge onto the deck, you have a moment of revelation as you emerge onto this achingly beautiful scene with Emma standing near the bow, your childhood sweetheart, now grown into this beautiful woman, a vision standing there waiting for you in a flowing white dress, smiling and laughing, wearing an exquisite tiara made of seashells and this oh. gorgeous necklace of pearls and holding a shimmering bouquet that reflects light like rainbows. It's the most beautiful, unexpected thing you have ever seen. Yes. And everything that you've been going through up to now starts to suddenly make sense. Yeah. It was all leading up to this moment of just of complete naked humility. Mm -hmm. with you stripped of all pride and expectation and to be given this with the crew lining on either side dressed in their best the captain oh. in his jacket to be given this this moment just feels like a moment of complete and utter grace well i i offer my hand and i i approach the bride or the lady and I look at I look at everyone and I nod to them, to the smiles and little bow as I'm thanking them for what they've done for me. And I approach the where the forecast, however she is. The bride holds out her hand to you. Come to me, Matthew Cole. You belong to the sea now, Matthew. You belong to me. Come to me. I bite down on my pipe because I'm keeping that. <laughs> <I approach her>. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Chapel is, is there. He looks very excited. He says, go on, Matthew. What have you got to lose? You're of already course. dead. Yes, it's true. I have, I have undergone a sea change. I am no longer the same. And I belong to you now, Emma, and to the sea. Together. And let's go back. Let's go back to the rest of you guys who are not seeing the same thing at all. Zombies are trying to climb on board the ship. Oh, the ship is beginning to sink. What do you want to do? Run for the lifeboats, I suppose. Aye, to the lifeboats, lad. Aye, okay. Cool. So you guys begin to lower a lifeboat, one of the, one of the chase boats, into the water. And you just drop it. The whole thing just smacks into the water and right on top of some of the shadows. And a bunch of bunch of sailors start jumping in. Who's going in? I'm in. I'm Are going. You George Hussey? Silas? Yes. John I... DeWitt? Yes. So I'm thinking uh, Isaac was in a very bad place and found comfort in the the harpoon he was given so i'm probably just in a frenzy still fighting unless somebody grabs me and yanks me out of it okay just yeah silas Thank is you. in the middle of, of just dismembering zombies and, and 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 he's in this blood rage almost is anyone going to take the time to try to coax I, him onto the there ship? be no time <laughs> everyone for themselves yeah. Are you listening at all, Silas? Or, uh, or sorry, Isaac? I, I think it would take physical contact, so... <laughs> Is anyone willing to do him. that? I will. I will. Nice. Okay. Yeah. okay. Me out of Mr. There, Chase, Silas. Mr. Chase, we must go! Yeah. And I'd probably start sobbing and praying. <laughs> okay. Out of the water, 
a body begins to rise, literally levitate. It is wearing these blue flowing robes with gold trim. It's holding its arms outwards, and there's this nimbus of shimmering light all around it. And the, and the, the corpse rising into the air begins to speak. Abraham Chapel, Henry Joy, Lawson Bond, your payment is complete. Now behold, yea, rejoice, lay aside your human laws and your morality, and enter now. And as you guys are rowing away, are any of you looking back at the ship? No. <laughs> I, f I feel like I would. Yeah, just, just can't help it, you know? Yeah. Silas... For just a moment, you see Matthew Cole up on deck. And for just a moment, you think you see him taking the hand of one of these zombies dressed in a white dress. And you're not sure what to make of that. Exactly. And Matthew Cole. As the boat rows away, the herald, the one dressed in the blue robes with the gold trim, drops backward into the water with a splash, and the ship descends down below the surface of the water, sinking as it goes. Well, I'll, em I'll embrace my bride on the ship as we sink together, and I'll sort of look happily outwards, you know, have to even wave to those ships that are going off in the distance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bon voyage. <laughs> uh, where did that one go? The ship and the herald sink like a stone down into the ocean. Items from the ship rain down from above and sink into the depths below you. The light around you becomes dimmer and bluer as you descend, and the colors disappear entirely, leaving only a deep blue and shadows. And then finally, even the blue goes away and the cold darkness closes around you on all sides. You don't know how much time passes as you descend. You can't tell whether you're alive or dead. You can't feel your body. You can no longer feel yourself move. Maybe you no longer have a body at all, you're not sure. The sun is just a memory now, and you're a passive observer now of your own fate. In these deep, cold depths, you hear strange things. Sounds from creatures that live their entire lives not knowing there even is such a thing as the sun. And yet still, you go down deeper and deeper into this lightless abyss. And at some point, you do become aware that there is light here in the darkness. Not sunlight. Strange alien lights dim and fleeting, the bioluminescent lures of nightmarish creatures lurking just at the edge of your perception, waiting to devour anything foolish enough to be tempted by their lures. Mm. Down and down through this alien realm you go, until finally below you, in the dim, sparkling lights of weird jellyfish and even more bizarre things, 
Below you begins to appear the ruins of a strange, giant, alien city. Down past towers and domes you sink, past shuttered windows, into a submerged plateau on which stands a great temple with a colossal stone door that you recognize from your dreams. Yes. And finally, you come before this door. Your mind struggles to comprehend the size, and there is something else, something behind that door, and something in your mind tells you that whatever is behind that door is something that you do not want to see. Ah, oh, okay. And yet, in your state of somewhere between living and dead, mm. you are helpless to do anything but watch as the herald reaches out and places a phantom key in the lock. The door begins to open. In your mind, you can hear your own terrified voice screaming to look away. But in the end, you have no choice. And you are finally forced to look into the darkness. One's gonna hear me scream underwater, so <laughs> maybe some Let's bubbles to... will come up. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to the rest of you guys. When the ship sinks, you find yourselves alone at sea in the chase boat together in the aftermath of the chaos. I keep rowing lads keep rowing we have to get to the whaling grounds if we have any hope of being found by one of our many sister ships out on the waters hi sir hi mr dewitt everybody on the boat could you make luck rolls for me please <laughs> 100 <laughs> Pass over here. No good. Days go by at seas, at sea, drifting, and you guys become increasingly desperate. Finally, John DeWitt, George Hussey, you guys are unconscious. Silas, Isaac, you guys have no idea whether whether George and and uh, John DeWitt are, are even alive at this point. You're too weak to really check. And you're drifting in this boat, losing hope. And when finally you guys see a boat on the horizon. Boat, a boat. I might even try to shake. DeWitt and Hussey. There's a boat! There's a boat! Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hussey, you might just... George Hussey might just wake up. John DeWitt... <laughs> John DeWitt doesn't wake up. Uh, you're not sure what his state is, but the ship does see you guys and eventually turns. And pretty soon, strong hands carry you aboard and, and bring water to you. And... The captain kneels down in front of you and says, What happened? Who are you? What ship were you on? The, oh gosh, what's the name of our ship? I don't remember anymore. The Barclay. The Barclay. The Barclay, sir. The Barclay. Madness. The whole crew, they just went mad. He was Sank the ship, sir. The Sank the ship. The whole ship. We ran. Are there no the... others? No, sir. No, no. It, there was madness, and they ran the ship into something. I don't know, sir. Sank the ship. The Barclay, you say? Yes, sir. That's Captain Chapel's ship. Yes, sir. He's, he's he's gone, sir. Down with the ship. Gone. My God. He says, "Well, 
Where are you from, lad? Virginia, sir. And I'd greatly like to see it again. I will get you home, lad. Or my name's not Captain Obed Marsh. We're Innsmouth bound. Thank you, sir. Thank you and so much. And with that, he stands up and the men begin singing. And we have reached the end. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you very much. Well done. Much. I really enjoyed that. You guys are terrific. So I'm assuming Henry Joy went down with the ship as well. I went to my reward. <laughs> well, yeah. Henry made his choice. Let's just say that. Uh, those oh. guys, those guys, yeah. If uh, if if you wanna, if you want me to give all the reveal now, I, 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 will, I will happily give out any information. Yeah. So the um, let me turn this off. So there are four, the four people: the captain, Lawson Bond, Henry Joy, and Obed Reed. They had made a deal with this entity called a a, a, a an old one called the the Mother of Waves. And the mother and they had encountered Relier um, five years ago on their voyage, and they thought it was like some magical place full of mysteries and wonder and knowledge, like an Atlantis under the sea. And they wanted to get back to it and unlock all the mysteries and 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 all this stuff. And um, that's when they were able to find Henry Joy and Henry Joy's book. Henry Joy's book was was a family heirloom that was passed down to him, a copy of, a, of another book, and it had a spell in it which could summon the Mother of Waves. And so they, they were used this spell to summon her. They made a deal with her that she would lead them back to Relie and give them access to the city, but they had to sacrifice three people on board their ship. They had to sacrifice three sailors. Not sailors, but three people, I guess. And so that's the whole goal of those guys was to sort of like get get three victims. And after the third victim, then this series of events takes place where the city rises and blah, blah, blah. Of course, it's a, it's a little trickier than that because they have to be in the right place and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it kind of all works out. I was really surprised to find out that I was the big guy behind all of the book and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, and that whole thing with Matthew Cole and yeah. the Bride of the Sea and everything, that all just emerged. That was all just us. That was oh. not part of that was not yeah. part of the scenario. Oh, the works. scenario the scenario is just like the the herald arises out of the water and, and everybody goes to the bottom. And and it actually there's this thing where if if you lose San or if the Herald touches you, or I don't remember exactly how it works, but one eye sees what the Herald sees, one eye sees what you see. And so you see as the ship drifts down to the bottom. And I was kind of like, that's weird. I, that's a little yeah. strange. And I really like the idea that one person might actually have a camera view and sink down with the ship to the bottom. And so I was kind of like, oh, I bet if I can coax Matthew Cole into this whole like <laughs> wedded to the sea. Thing. Yeah, no, because Troy's yeah, a great yeah. player. And he's like, oh, yeah, an epic end like that is perfect, right? So um, I was pretty confident I could make it happen. And, and, and you, guys, you, guys, you guys are terrific. Shortly was after the pipe, was the pipe just a gift? The pipe was a, just a gift, and so okay. was the scrimshaw carving that Silas got. They were just okay. they, they were just things. Yeah, they didn't have any. Rengi is the best man. I love her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Short, yeah. Shortly after I became Henry Joy, I kind of felt like the story wanted me to follow through and kill Matthew, but I'd already had the scene with him, and I thought. Maybe he was a sea person, so I wouldn't yeah. want to kill you. And I was I decided like a to weird... kill Reed instead. Was I a drowned guy thing, or was I a deep one, or what was I exactly? I'm not sure. And see, that's that's what kind of emerged. It was sort of like, oh, oh you know, you guys thought Matthew Cole is changing into something, and I was like, hey, let's go with that. I, I don't know what. Maybe okay. it doesn't Magic. matter. Maybe it doesn't I, matter. I saw it doesn't in matter. my dreams. I saw you a strangling. Oh, or yeah. whatever Her... his name was. Did I kill him or was it something else? 
<laughs> yeah, you were. So how this all started was was you were possessed by a siren, and when you're possessed by a siren, you're never the same again. And 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 you just normally in the, in the scenario, you start showing odd signs of having been mm-hmm. possessed, like you're kind of a shell of a human, and. Uh, you got locked down in the brig, which made it so that the other sailors couldn't pick on you, which was what would have, what would normally happen next is they would have been like, Oh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're not right. And so they're, it'll take the opportunity to like stick you with a knife and throw you over or something like that. Yeah. But you were locked down in the brig, so I couldn't do that to you. So I was like, well, I'll have to find some other, you know, some other story to go with this. And uh, I thought it worked out pretty well, actually. So yeah. I did actually kill my shipmate then. It was just in like, to trance or something yeah you did you were in a trance oh, right you were, you were sorry. Right. Oh, you were right <laughs> i'd be right to I keep you I'm in guilty. the rig laddie. oh i'm so oh, i'm sorry i thought yeah. i was innocent <laughs> that's a that's a that's a tough scene to run because it's told from like three different perspectives there's oh. matthew cole's perspective there's john dewitt's perspective which is another dream and then there's the real perspective and so getting it right is, is can be a little tricky uh, it was a really I, good scenario, though. I, yeah. Is it yeah. is it Shepard yeah. that gets targeted every time, or is that just because Tom was playing Shepard that he got targeted? Uh it it changes. It's it's just depend. Yeah. It, uh, Herman Shepard was an easy victim for me, and and yeah, he kind of stood out. So early on, Matthew That's Cole right. is the one who is always the murderer. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, that was an awful, awful lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it Thank was. Thank you very much, Stefan. Very good. Yeah, of course. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Holly Buto, <laughs> Preston Firestone, Troy Lehman, Kaylin McDowell, and myself with Stefan Amshi as a keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game oh, mastering. Right. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you'd like to show us your appreciation, please visit our Patreon page, or you can use the thanks button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.